Just bopping away there, bopping to Billy Fury, oh yes. But why, why am I bopping to Billy Fury, I hear you ask? Possibly. Um, because I went back to my mum's the other weekend and was helping her clean out the loft, because she's going to move house. So getting stuff down and taking away a load of stuff that's mine that's still there. And whilst there, found this. Ooh, a box of wonder! Upon opening it, it turns out it's full of all my mum's old vinyl singles from when she was young. So she doesn't have uh, the ability to play vinyl at the minute, but I do. I have a record player, so I've got them for safekeeping at the minute. There's, I haven't looked through this all yet, but there's loads of stuff. Um, no idea what that is. Very few have sleeves. It's the Who substitute. I hate Who. Um, Mike Redway. Uh, there's a load of Billy Fury. This one, yep. Decker, Billy Fury record. I know there's some Cliff Richard in there. Somewhere. But you can't have it all good. Jerry and the Pacemakers. Tony Christie. Yeah. someone. Anyway, yeah, so nice treasure trove of old records to look through and listen to at some point. Oh, Donovan. Never heard of the song, but it's Donovan. Uh, ooh, what's this? One with a sleep. Japan. Why, they look like fine fellows. I'm sure they sing a decent pop tune. Yeah, it just reminds me of... Uh, there used to, in High Wycombe, be a shop called Scorpion Records. It was there for 29 years. My dad did their roof for them. Uh, <laughs> but I used to love it in there, because it sold CDs, T-shirts, uh, uh, and second-hand vinyl, second-hand CDs. But it was, it was just a little independent record store, and it just sold really good stuff. They were quite selective with their tastes. Um, so you didn't just get pop stuff in there taking over it was all different genres of dance and rock and things where but the uh, actual second hand vinyl section was brilliant they graded all their stuff A to C uh, on the quality whether it was scratched or not but even C's meant it might have a single scratch that's it and that was only if you were very unlucky it got to the point you take it to the counter and they'd ask do you want to inspect it before we sell it to you I knew I could trust them like, no it's fine I'll just take it and they're all between like three and eight pounds mostly and I think it was from watching Freaks and Geeks I got really into whole sort of uh, late 70s early 80s or even earlier sort of old rock bands all the bands you've heard about or maybe heard people mention in Kerrang or whatever never heard like Nazareth and uh, Rush and people so go out go three quid I can afford that for you know to randomly buy an album and I got some gems over the past few years unfortunately the shop's closed now to 29 years it's quite annoying I think they still sell through their website but here's some of the gems I managed to find okay there's a David Bowie Space Oddity single which someone's actually written over <laughs> not quite sure why they did that in a pure Wayne's World moment that's the only reason I got this Frampton Comes Alive. There we got it. Simon and Garfunkel Greatest Hits, because I love the sound of silence. Cindy Lauper True Colours. Just I had it on tape, but I love the picture of her on the back. With the money. Well, no, sorry, newspaper skirt. It's brilliant. Uh, I think the first thing I ever got from Scorpion, record-wise, was Depeche Mode The Singles. Uh, Sisters of Mercy Floodland in a nice sleeve. Damned Faz Phantasmagoria. Grimly fiendish always amused me. And in a similar uh, damned vein, Captain Sensible solo album. 
Then going from the whole Freaks and Geeks thing and just wandering in there once a week, uh, got Rush's first album. Um, a couple of uh, Blue Oyster Cult albums. It's that one, uh, Fire Unknown Origin, and their first album too. With a trippy one. And they all turned out to be really good as well. It's brilliant. Blues Brothers, a briefcase full of blues, which is uh, their uh, live concert they did before the film ever came out. Oh, and the first two Black Sabbath albums. But I guess The Jewel is not my favourite album, but in sort of, if you're into records and stuff, I guess this would be The Jewel in the Crown is I decided, because of Freaks and Geeks, they always go on about Pink Floyd, so I decided to get Dark Side of the Moon. Now, I, I can't remember how much it was, it's probably about six pounds, but went in, and when I got it home, there was something else in with the record. It turns out that it came with the original poster they gave away with it, So I thought, oh wow, that's pretty cool. Someone's kept that in really good condition. Kept the poster, but even better than that, the original sticker. <laughs> now and then I tell people about this. If I meet a big Pink Floyd fan at parties, whatever, I tell people about this find. But when I mention the sticker, I say, yeah, it came with the original sticker. So I stuck it on my car, or I stuck it on my guitar. Stuck it somewhere just to see the look on their face of shock and horror. Like, what the hell have you done? So, I ain't joking. She was just a sticker. <laughs> but yes. Vinyl. Mm -hmm. And speaking of things non-vinyl, the new Nine Inch Nails album, Year Zero. It changes colour when it heats up. The CD, that is. As opposed to the packaging. Because um, that would be weird. Uh... Yeah, it starts all sort of black. You sort of see numbers. You leave it in a CD player, apparently. After a while, it heats up, comes out white, and you can see all the numbers. I just wonder what would happen if you put it to really hot temperatures, like held a flame under it or over a Bunsen burner or something. You know, it would probably go through to transparent, and then just Trent's face will appear out of it. Or it might just melt, but. Not I, sir. Not I. It's funny. I don't remember there being a song called I'm a big pink neon warrior with a plastic sword hiding behind a tree in my pyjamas. Maybe it's the secret song. <laughs>